Noble Review, Macroeconomics and Microeconomics, for use with introductory college macro and micro courses, as well as the AP macro and micro exams. In this podcast, we'll go over the top 10 concepts that you need to know unit by unit. Noble 2, Economic Performance, Macro. Number 1. How does the circular flow model work? The circular flow model is a system of incentives that shows how businesses and households interact through product markets and resource markets. Households demand goods and services from businesses in the product market, while businesses supply those goods and services. Businesses demand resources from households in the factor market, while households supply those resources. The government can be added to the middle of the diagram since it provides public goods and services and also transfer payments to households and businesses. Then you can show the government collecting taxes from households and businesses. Number two, what is included in a nation's gross domestic product? The four components to a nation's gross domestic product or GDP are consumer expenditures, what households buy, gross investment expenditures, what businesses buy, government expenditures, what the government buys, and net export expenditures. That's what we export minus what we import. The GDP accounts for the production of goods and services within a country's borders in one year. There are three components to gross investment. One, business investment. This includes capital goods, non-residential structures, and intellectual property. Two, residential investment, such as housing. Three, adjustment to inventories. This accounts for unsold goods produced in the current year. You can add up a nation's overall income to get GDP too. GDP is equal to the sum of wages and salaries, rents, interest income, profits, indirect business taxes, depreciation of capital, and net foreign factor income. Number three, what is excluded from a nation's gross domestic product? A nation's gross domestic product reflects the production of final goods and services produced legally within a country's borders in one year. The following items are not included in the calculation of a country's GDP. One, financial transactions. These transactions include purchases of stocks and bonds. Two, transfer payments, such as social security checks. Three, used goods, such as secondhand golf clubs. Four, non-market transactions, such as you cleaning your room. Five, illegal transactions, such as bootlegging. Six, Unreported transactions, such as tips that you don't report to the government. 7. Intermediate goods, such as the fabric in your butterfly net. 8. Goods produced in other countries, such as your cell phone. Number 4. What is the difference between real GDP and nominal GDP? Real GDP is output that has been adjusted to hold the price level constant. This way, we can measure the level of goods and services that are produced over a period of time without worrying about changes in prices. Nominal GDP has not been adjusted for changes in the price level and reflects only the market value of all goods and services in the year everything was produced. Real GDP measures all of a nation's output, which makes it one of the most important measurements of economic growth over time. However, An increase in nominal GDP can mean that prices and output have increased, so nominal GDP is not the best measurement of growth. Real GDP is equal to the nominal GDP divided by a GDP price index. The real GDP per capita is another great way to measure economic growth and a nation's general economic well-being. It represents the output per person within an economy. We use this measure to determine whether a nation's standard of living is increasing or decreasing. 
the real GDP per capita is equal to real GDP divided by population. Number five, what is a business cycle? The business cycle shows the upturns and downturns of economic activity in a nation. It contains four key parts. One, expansions. That's when the real GDP rises, the price level rises, and the unemployment rate falls. Peaks. That's where real GDP is at its max and resources are fully employed. Three, contractions. This is where real GDP falls, the price level falls, and unemployment rises. Four, troughs. Real GDP is at its lowest point and unemployment is near its highest point. This diagram illustrates the four parts along with an upward sloping line to demonstrate the long-term trend of economic growth. Number six, how do you measure the rate of unemployment? The unemployment rate measures the percentage of people in the labor force that are presently unemployed and actively looking for employment. To calculate the rate of unemployment, take the number of people that are unemployed and looking for work and divide by the number of people that are working plus the number of people looking for work. So the unemployment rate is equal to quantity unemployed divided by the quantity in the labor force times 100. The unemployment rate does not count discouraged workers or people that have given up their job hunts. As a result, the unemployment rate is often understated. There are three main types of unemployment that make up the unemployment rate. One, frictional unemployment. This is temporary or seasonal. This includes recent graduates and people who quit their job to look for something better. Two, structural unemployment. This occurs when certain skills of laborers are no longer needed. This includes people who are replaced by technology or new industries through creative destruction. These people need to retrain or move to find employment. Three, cyclical unemployment. This is the result of a recession. This includes people who are laid off from work because the economy has contracted. It is associated with a downturn in the business cycle. Frictional unemployment and structural unemployment are completely normal within an economy. These two types of unemployment make up an economy's natural rate of unemployment. Number seven, what is the difference between demand pull and cost push inflation? Demand pull inflation is caused by an increase in aggregate demand. This means that buyers are pulling up the general price level of goods and services within an economy. Cost push inflation is caused by a decrease in short run aggregate supply. This means that an increase in production costs or resource prices have caused an increase in the general price level. Cost push inflation is less desirable than demand pull inflation because cost push inflation is accompanied by a decrease in output and an increase in unemployment. When inflation and unemployment increase at the same time, the economy experiences stagflation. Number eight, how do you calculate the inflation rate? The inflation rate measures the percentage increase in consumer prices over a period of time. To calculate the inflation rate, we use a consumer price index or CPI. The consumer price index tracks the prices of goods and services that the typical household buys using a market basket sample. The CPI is equal to the market basket of one year divided by the market basket of a base year. The inflation rate is equal to the new CPI minus the older CPI divided by the older CPI times 100. Prices generally rise over time, but sometimes prices fall. Deflation occurs when the inflation rate becomes negative. Be careful not to confuse this concept with disinflation. Disinflation is when the rate of inflation slows down. Number nine, how do you calculate the real interest rate? To calculate the real interest rate or nominal interest rate, we can use the Fisher equation. The real interest rate accounts for changes in the price level and is very important for businesses that are interested in investment spending. When real interest rates are low, businesses will increase spending. When, in, when real interest rates are high, businesses are less likely to invest. 
the real interest rate is equal to the nominal interest rate minus the inflation rate. Or in other words, the nominal interest rate is equal to the real interest rate plus the inflation rate. You can determine the percentage change in real income with this equation too. The real income percentage increase is equal to the nominal income percentage increase minus the inflation rate. Number 10. Who are the winners and losers of unanticipated inflation? When inflation occurs unexpectedly, some people will benefit and some people will not benefit. People that make fixed payments, such as debtors, gain from sudden inflation because they pay off their debt with cheaper dollars. Assuming that these debtors borrowed at a fixed interest rate, the purchasing power of the loaned money, or the principal, has decreased. People that receive fixed payments, though, such as creditors who lend at a fixed interest rate, they're going to lose from sudden inflation because they are receiving cheaper dollars. Therefore, people that earn fixed income will not benefit from unanticipated inflation. That wraps up this episode of Noble Review's Top 10 Economic Concepts. Now for extra study resources, please visit my website at mrmedico.info. Thanks for choosing to learn with the Noble Review. Till next time.